this is the ninth or ninth or tenth practice today, and uh, it's just been a really good group, and that's been that's what's been exciting. Is that, uh, and I, we thought that we thought probably in the summer we were looking at a team that was going to look one way uh, in October, look a different way January, February, and I, I really honestly believe that with this team, uh, the young guys are extremely talented and I think as we get more practices they get more experience um, it's really going to help them. Now, obviously with the, the schedule we got uh, in November or December they're going to get uh, they're going to get huge tests right away but uh, I really like the development I like the demeanor uh, the foundation obviously laid last year has really helped the guys that were returning not just help them but I think it's helped them help these new guys coming into a different situation and um, right now things are, are going as well as we could hope for right now. Obviously a pretty tight guard rotation this year. What do you see as Yeah, you know, it's almost point the guard? opposite of uh, a year ago. You know, when we got here, you know, I, I remember my first locker room talk when I met the guys. We had seven guys on scholarship and we were deep at guard and we were probably two bodies short up front. Um, you know, really only last year playing the Wares and Tony uh, up front, we had to swing, um, obviously the way we played Kyle, we would swing Kyle a little bit, but we were very fragile up front. And now a year later, uh, you lose three guards to the first round, um, and the wearers, that's five of the eight that you were playing last year, uh, but it's almost flipped. Now we've got a little bit more depth, not the, all the depth we want up front, but we've got a little bit more front line depth than we had a year ago not as much depth uh, in the backcourt. I think that's why so much is going to be on uh, Isaac and Bryce and Norman. I think three good experience, even though Isaac hasn't played a lot. He, he's been in our program for a year now. A lot going to be put on them, but I think the development of Noah and the development of Juana uh, has been really good. Uh, really since spring moving forward, I've really liked their develop development. You're going to see them in the rotation, but um, obviously uh, the depth in the backboard isn't where we want it right now. How do you see it at point guard right now with Bryce and Isaac? Well, they can both play it, you know, and I think eventually as we move along, um, Kavan will have the ability uh, as we get deeper into the season, uh, and we won't wait very long on that as far as he's such a good rebounder, he can rebound and go. Uh, but we're very, very comfortable uh, with Bryce and, and Isaac. These are two really good players. Uh, Bryce, obviously, an outstanding freshman season, proved himself as a point guard. Uh, and Isaac played point on our reserve team all last year going against the guys. So uh, he's been able to do that all year as well. And they're both comfortable playing either or. And I think that's where they're going to complement each other. We've worked really all summer. Uh, last year, we mixed teams up a lot. Uh, because we knew Kyle would play some point and some stretch four, if that's what you want to call them, or a big guard. Uh, this year we've gone from day one pretty much the same teams. And that's really making sure Norman, Bryce, and Isaac are playing a lot of minutes together. Uh, and we did that really starting back in June and July. All three of these guys were on campus all summer, so they're getting more and more experience doing that because they're going to play a lot together. You lose so much of the scoring. Right. Is that just something where you see, obviously, Norman kind of seems like the obvious guy, but who else? Do you yeah, you yeah, know, Norman's had, I like his progression, and that's what you want to see, but his development has been incredible. Uh, last year, a great junior year. This year, we're going to ask more of him. Uh, that doesn't mean you force things, and I think these guys know our program. It's about ball movement, it's about sharing. And what's going to happen with Norman is minutes are going to go up. Uh, you know, it's a year where Norman's got to be 30 minutes plus, where last year he was probably 26, 27, 28 minutes, so now he's going to be 30 minutes plus. So his production has the ability to go up just because of minutes, uh, but he's earned that. You know, the Adidas Nations this summer, he was MVP at. He's had a great summer. Uh, he's worked really hard on his jump shot. Um, I think he's the best driving guard in college basketball. I may be biased, but there's just not anybody I've seen drive the ball in the open court or the half court like he does. And if the jump shot matches up to it, you have one of the best guards in the country. And I really think that's going to happen because Norman's had a really good uh, summer. But as you mentioned, scoring, I think it'll be a lot of committee. Uh, I think Bryce and Isaac obviously have the ability to score. You're going to have to guard them because when you just look at pure shooting on our team, it probably starts with Bryce and Isaac. So you're going to have to guard the two of those. I think what will be a little bit different this year is that we've got go-to guys that are actually in the post 
other than guards. We posted guards a lot last year, but the addition of, of Welsh to Parker will really give us, a, Tony's had a very good summer, Thomas has been here all summer long. That gives us two legit guys to throw it to in the post. Uh, then you swing guys like Juana and Kavon, and Noah's had a very good summer. You know, Noah's production wasn't much last year, not his fault. He was in our rotation, messed up his face, and that put him out for a while, but Noah's somebody that can score the ball as well. So you're gonna have to have some new guys come to the forefront, and then guys that were here last year are gonna be asked to do a little bit more. And that's what that's what should happen as as guys go from one year to the next. You're working in front of these guys with the fire against a pretty tough non-conference schedule. Is that a good thing or is that bad? Well, I don't know yet. <laughs> I'll tell you after the outcomes, I guess. Uh, it, no, it's just that's what we want to do. Uh, we want to play, and if there's something out there called a Champions Classic, UCLA should be in it. Uh, we've got the most championships in college basketball, so we should be in it. So being in a tournament or a classic with the likes of North Carolina and Kentucky and now Ohio State, uh, that's who classics we should be in with. Uh, we've got a new home and home with Gonzaga, which I think would be a great home and home series. Uh, we play in the Bahamas where we could play three ranked opponents uh, in our three games in the Bahamas. We play at Alabama, which is not going to be an easy game. Uh, you, you look at that trip of going Kentucky, or really Gonzaga, home, Kentucky, uh, at Alabama, and then you're at Utah and at Colorado, that's a stretch. So we've got a lot of games that got to prepare us for that stretch, and those first four home games are going to be pivotal because three of those four home games have an awful lot of starters and a lot of scoring backs, so we're going to get tested very early. Um, when you came in, you about the players in the different than for you and your staff now. Well, we were able to lay that foundation because those five individuals uh, had an awful lot to do. Three of them were, we got five of them in NBA camps right now, so that doesn't happen very often where you lose five guys and they're in NBA camps and, uh, and trying to make rosters and obviously we think some of them are going to be locks for locks for a lot of roster spots, but uh, those were five really talented people but really had a very good basketball IQ of how to do things and, and they bought in right away and what's helped is those guys that were remaining, Tony, Bryce, uh, you throw Isaac who was out and Norman, those four guys were here last year and they got to see that and now they've brought in that kind of respect and that foundation and they're passing it on to this very talented freshman group so you hope all that blends well. I'm surprised that you uh, well, Jonah, we knew. You know, we're getting somebody there that's six ten, really skilled. Uh, can play multiple positions, and you can't pass on anybody uh, like that. Not to mention that he's a terrific individual. Um, so we were gonna. We knew that. You know, it has nothing to do academically. It's his clock. Uh, his international clock was what was the thing that got messed up, and we were hoping that we, you know, had an outside chance to win that waiver. We didn't win that waiver, but we knew it was probably 50-50 whether he would be ready to go this year or not. But he'll get start hopefully starting in December. He'll get to practice with the guys, and he'll get what Isaac got last year. And I think what you'll see in Isaac this year is the the benefits of having a year where you sit out and learn, get stronger, get quicker, all those things. And, That'll happen with Joe. Um, so we don't get him this year, but uh, that's going to be a tremendous addition next year. You almost never see that happen in basketball when a talented player like that. Kind of red shirts, I guess. With, with Isaac, how much have you, what have you seen this year in the next Well, what I've liked about Isaac, one, he's a terrific person. And from day one last year, he played like he was playing in games. He didn't take any practices off. He didn't take, the only time he was out of practice when he had an academic situation with class or test or something he had to get to. Every practice, he busted his tail. I can remember him grabbing Coach Schilling after every single practice to, that he went through. Then he'd work another half hour with Coach Schilling. And that told us right away what kind of individual we were getting and how that kid was really driven. And Isaac's a very driven individual. And he's he, he fit in last year. But he you watch his practice, he fits into what we're doing right from the beginning. He's a terrific player. With the guard rotation being what it is without Kyle, do you think you guys are going to be able to push the ball as much as you were last well, year? Well, I hope so, because that's the foundation we wanted to lay. And, and if you look at last year, um, the way what Zach and Bryce did off the bench, um, that's who Bryce is. Bryce likes to push the ball. So we want Bryce doing that. We want Isaac. Isaac's a player that does the same thing. He can push the ball. Kevon gets rebounds. You know, 
he's going to be able to get it and go. There is no outlet. So we were very efficient offensively. There's no question. We played at a very high level tempo. I hope we can continue to play at that tempo because I like who we got running. Juana Bell, that's his, that's his strength, is he runs the floor better than anybody. So there are some guys that we want to we'll probably be different lineups and different groups that we have that are going to run better than others. The argument would be when we came to our bench last year, we ran better. I don't know if we were more efficient offense, defense, whatever, but when we went to the bench, we got quicker. This year, it may not be go to the bench and get quicker, or it may be that way. we got to wait and see all that factors in with practices and stuff. But I do think the, the athleticism and, and what we've seen so far has been good. Now we're on a short court right now, so we look real fast. Uh, so we're hoping to get back into poly soon uh, to be able to take advantage of the long court again. What's the greatest challenge now with well, I tell you what, the, the, the university and the people working within the university have been tremendous since that happened because uh, I was on vacation at the time and I got all the pictures. And, but you're looking at Paulie basically having as much wood as we have here in the men's gym and it being almost calf deep. And that's all through. You don't see what the locker room was room, the training room was room, uh, our weight room was room. Uh, so we've been able to make a lot of changes for one. Um, Rules changed August uh, August 1 as far as what we can provide for the student athlete now. So we've had to make some changes in the infrastructure, which is really going to help. Uh, like you'll see the, the media room now is our weight room slash media room. Um, we're now having our, our old weight room will be our nutrition room. Uh, we're able to make some changes to our training room. But had the flood not happened, probably wouldn't have happened. So we've really turned a negative into a positive, and the people here have worked morning, you know, they're, they're in 6 in the morning, working the 6 at night, trying to get us back in there. And hopefully by this time next week, or maybe late next week, we'll be back in Bali. Uh, but everybody's really been accommodated trying to get started. How much do you see Thomas playing to start the season? Thomas has been terrific. Uh, I've said a lot, you, you get 13 individuals like that. Uh, he's just a tremendous person, great work ethic. Comes up to you every practice and thanks you for, the, for just coaching him for two hours. And the thing I've learned with Tom is I've got to be on my toes because after every practice, he asks me personally, what do I need to work on? And you got to be ready to give him an answer. <laughs> so uh, I'm always prepared. When we shoot free throws now at the end of practice, I'm not just messing around with the coaches. I'm collecting my thoughts of what am I going to tell Thomas? Because in the next five minutes, he's coming up to me. And that's the kind of player you want, somebody that's just a sponge trying to get better. And at seven foot, that's a pretty good sponge to have. And, uh, but he's been terrific. He's running the floor well. He's working very hard. I think it helps him and Tony. You know, Tony last year didn't have a true center. He was having to guard out on the floor because when he's guarding either one of the wares, they're picking and popping and playing on the floor. Now Tony and Thomas are their natural centers and they're getting to go against each other every day and I think they're getting better because of it. Thanks guys.